Hi there, Nathan Patrick Taylor here, and this is the third video in the series on Alteryx for Excel users. And this video, I wanted to take you through using the transform tools that are part of creating aggregates and calculations inside Alteryx, and also using the tools that let us create formulas, which is the formula tool, uh, inside of Alteryx as well. So I've got a data set in here that's uh, based on a sample that I have from one of my analytics books, all fake data. And this data set represents guests that stayed at a fictitious hotel called the President's Inn. So I get the guest name, the room that they booked, uh, their arrival and departure date, the number of guests that they have, and the daily rate for the room that they stayed in. So first thing I usually do when I pull in a data set like this is I take the select tool and I drop it in here so that I can see if the data types are getting recognized properly. In this case, I'm really concerned about the arrival and departure date that it gets pulled over as a date and that the guests and the room rate are being pulled in as a numeric field. And that looks good, so I'm not going to mess with those. First thing I want to do is showcase the formula tool. And I want to be able to create an if statement here that separates the rooms based on or the length of stay that they've had at the inn uh, based on the arrival and departure date. So I can't do that directly because there isn't a field in there that tells me how long they stayed, but I do have the arrival and departure date. So we'll start with that first. I'll add a new column and I'll just call this days. And uh, we're going to use a date diff function. If you're familiar with SQL or Excel, there's a date diff function there uh, that we can use. In this case, it's a it's called date time diff. And it has a it takes two dates and then the unit of measurement that we're going to use. In this case, we want to start with the end date, which is the departure date, and then tell us the difference between the departure date and the arrival date. All right, and then the unit of measurement that we're going to use is going to be in double quotes, and it's going to be days. And then I'm going to change the data type here to integer 16. I I always forget to do this. So make sure uh, it's not it's set to the correct type. It may be string if you were doing something different, but in this case, it's it's a numeric, so I'm going to set it to integer 16. You'll know that you've messed this up if you go to reference the output from this field, expecting it to be a number, and Alteryx tells you that it's a string, then obviously go back and look at your formula because you didn't enter it correctly. All right, I'm going to run that workflow, and we'll look at the output here and see if the days are calculating correctly. Just a quick check. They came in on December 1st and then departed on the 4th. That's three overnight stays. So we have three days in there. So that looks, that looks good. Now, what's great about this is I'm, I'm going to build the if statement, but I want to reference the days. Usually in my logic, my way of thinking, I would have to drop in another formula tool and then reference the field that comes out of that, the previous formula tool. But with Alteryx, we don't have to do that. I can simply add a new entry in the configuration pane here. And I'm going to add a new column again, and I'm going to call this uh, length. And then I can reference the days already using this, using what was done in previously in the formula tool. And I'm just going to create a simple if statement. If I start typing if, we'll have some options here that we can choose from. I want the first if option. I get a template text as placeholder here. And we're going to say if the days, which we just created, are greater than or equal to 5. And this is where when I hit 5, if it shows up in here that it's not recognizing the 5 as a constant numeric data type, then I know that in the previous step I set the data type incorrectly. So it'll say, why don't you have quotes on this field? Because it's being output as a string. So if it's greater than 5, then what we want to do is call it a, uh, a long stay. And if if the else portion of it is going to be less than five. We're going to call this a short stay. All right. Now everything checks out. I have a little sample here in the data preview that it looks good. What I typically forget on these if statements is the end if. 
I've used programming languages where that wasn't necessary. And if I remove it, you'll see it says malformed if statement. So make sure that you have end if on the end of it. The other thing you'll notice if you've typed it incorrectly is that the color coding goes away. So the keywords are in brown, the field names are in dark purple, the operators are in this light purple color, constants are black, and then any text is in a light blue turquoise color. All right, so that looks good. The output is going to be a string, so I'll leave that data type set to a string, and then we'll go back and we'll run the workflow again and make sure that our output is solid. So three days is short, eight days is long. See if there's a five in here, there's long. Uh, for a short. Excellent. So that all looks good. I'm not going to do anything else with that field. It was just created as an example of how to create a data field with an if statement. So we'll leave it there. All right, the next thing that I'm going to do then, I've already calculated the day's difference. What we're going to do is we're going to summarize all of our, our values, our our amounts based on how many days somebody stayed multiplied by the by the daily rate. Now, I've or, I've already said before I can use the formula field or the formula tool over and over again. I don't have to drop subsequent formula tools in. Uh, so we're just going to create another entry, and we're going to add a new column, and we're going to just call this amount just to keep it simple. And the amount is just going to be the number of days multiplied by the daily rate. All right, and you see we'll get an answer here, and this isn't a string. This is actually going to be coming out as a double. So we'll go find a double data type in here. There it is. And then run this workflow again, and we get the value out here at the end amount. So three days at $150 a day at 150, 300, 450, that makes sense. Uh, all of those look good. Two days at 325, that's 650. Uh, 300 times 4 is 1200. Okay, all looking good. I like the I like the output there. So now I want to start doing my summaries. Okay, this is some of the typical things that we would we would do in Excel. And I'm going to switch over to the Transform tab, and we're going to do a very simple summary here. We'll drop it onto the end of our workflow. I'm not going to group by any fields because I just want a grand total. So that grand total is going to be the amount. So we'll say add a sum of the amount and we'll just run it and I should get just one single cell, which is the grand total of everything that we have in there. Okay. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to create some other totals. I want to do a running total. And I want to show you the difference between doing a running total in a group and then a running total for all of the data together. So to do that, we are going to take the running total tool and we'll drag it and drop it behind our workflow here. The first one I'm going to do is just a running total for all of the records that we have in the data set. So again, I'm not going to select any group by. I'm just going to do a running total based on the amount and we'll run our workflow. And you'll see here I get 450 plus 900 is 1350 plus another 450 is 1800 and so on until we get to our total. So that 21,430 and 50 cents is the same as the grand total that we got here. So we know that looks good. Now I'm going to show you another running total, but this time when we add the running total in, we're going to create it based on the room type. So what I want to do is I want to see for each room type, the bay window, the ocean, I think there's a, there's a side room, I want to sort those and then have the running total based on that particular group. So we're going to go back to preparation and we're going to drop in a sort here. And then we're going to take the sort and say I want to first sort by the room type uh, in ascending order, that's fine. And I may want to do a little bit more sorting, like sorting by the arrival date and, and so on. And I could do that in here just by adding additional items if I want to. That's fine. And then what we'll do back in the running total tool is we'll say I want to group it by the room type. And then I want to create a summary for the amount, do a running total for the amount. All right, very good. And then we'll run the workflow again. 
and we can see so I have the running total that I that that I had from the previous tool except this time it's going to reset itself when I get to a new group so here it starts to run up and then when I get to a new group which starts on row 11 it counts over again starts from the beginning so now I've, I've got a running total that I'm working on for both groups and I may I may want to rename the output of this to something like room running total or room type running total just so it's clear uh, what those two things are all right so I've got an overall summary I've got a running total and now I want to put the running total together with the actual total uh, just to put them side by side so we're going to do a simple we're going to go to the join tab and we're going to use an append fields tool we're going to drag these two in uh, but we're going to change the bottom option down here we don't want it to uh, give us any error message if it's appending more than more records than 16 we want to say allow all appends and then we're going to select this whole section and move it above so that the sum total is in the last column all right and then we'll go ahead and run it and so what we should see is the running total and this was the running total that was for every record not grouped and then the sum total column at the end and we see that the two totals match that's good and the last thing that we're going to do in all of this is a a, cumul a presentive uh, percentage of the total so uh, again we're going to use another formula tool to do that keep it real simple so I'll drag it on to the end here and uh, we're going to add a new column but this time I'm going to call it percent of total and uh, again this makes it really simple because of the layout that we've had with the data here and the way that we've done it so we're going to take the amount and divide that amount by the uh, total the sum amount all of that and then multiply it by a hundred all right and we'll run it real quick there's some formatting things I want to do but we'll run it real quick uh, and make sure it wasn't string it is string see I always forget to do that too uh, I want to I want to leave it I want to leave it double just to show you what's going to happen when it comes out as double and uh, you'll see it's a it's a percentage but it's got a lot of decimal points after it so what I want to do is go back into the formula tool and change this to fixed decimal and I only want it to be scale of one so it outputs one decimal point afterward there we go so 2.1 percent 4.2 this must have been a large group here or they stayed a long time eight days in uh, one of the more expensive rooms there you go all right so all in all summary of what we did we pulled in some information from a hotel database took a difference between the days to calculate how long that particular guest stayed in the room multiplied those days by the room rate, categorized them into short and long-term stay using an if statement, did a running total for the whole group, a running total grouped by the room type, did a summary for the entire data set, combined those two things together, and then did a percentage of overall income or amount based on the total. So there you have it. Very quick and easy demo of those particular tools in Alteryx. As usual, if you have any comments, leave them below. Subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you think and what you're looking forward to seeing in the future. Thanks.